Hello and welcome back. We are on CMake episode 4 and this time I'm just going to talk about versioning your source code. Didn't really talk about it. Maybe, maybe this should be earlier on, but it doesn't it doesn't matter. I need to cover the core stuff too. I've basically been covering my favorite stuff instead. Alright, so if you want to version your source code, well, just to get started here, I've opened the old project we've been working on in the first three videos opened it in Visual Studio Code and we've got this root level cmakelist.txt and where you have your project that's where you can add a version and what you do is you just add version here and then a version number and now what we want to do is we actually want the source code to know what version that we are working with so in order for the source code to need to, to know this we're gonna to have to add a header file that goes to our binary directory where we're building to and so to do that we'll go configure file and we basically need a header file for the input and like a, a header file for the output so we'll just do like olas um, config yeah we'll do config dot h dot n and then, then you need an output file so we'll do olas config dot h so there's an n and then just a dot h okay so now what we need to do is we need to actually tell our source where to be able to find this so we don't necessarily need our libraries to know our version it's mainly our uh, course source file so what we want to do is we underneath this executable here we'll go target include directories and we'll just put in the name of the project which we're we'll keep using the macro for now of just project underscore name and we'll, we'll call this one public public and then here we're going to use another special macro for where it builds to that way it doesn't matter where the user is deciding to build it to and this this macro is part of cmake it's project binary dir so that's where it's getting written to so we want to include the binary directory we're building to as an include and the reason for that is we're gonna write this dot h out to there and it will have the version number so it needs to know where to find that dot h and that's what the whole point of this target include directories is so now we actually need to make this dot uh, n file and to do that we'll just go add another file and we'll just do it on our root level here I'm gonna do it just using Visual Studio Code and we're gonna call this olas config dot h dot n so it's gotta be that first one we specified right there so now we'll make this file and what we want to have here is sort of a, a macro that will get figured out when we actually try to compile and stuff so we'll define and we need the project name here so it's gonna be that version major and then at and we'll need the same word oh, olas so olas of course will be your project name it's just uh, our lord and savior here and just double check that that's actually what I named it Yep. so this needs to match this isn't something that you can project name in as far as I know once you're in this header and then we'll do version major and then we'll do another one here again right below it I'm just gonna copy line down and we'll do a version minor minor 
Okay, now when CMake configures this header, it'll find the values and they'll be these will be replaced. And it'll find the value based on this. Of course, of course the first one is major, the second one is minor. So let's go back here. And let's see, do we need anything else? Okay, we need to modify our main. We've already set, we've already given it the include directories. So now we can just go include and it'll be olas config dot h. All right, and it doesn't see this right now, but it will as soon as we update our CMake. So let's go ahead and preemptively do a little printing out of the version. There's a couple ways we can do this. I'm gonna go ahead and put the argc um, int arg count care pointer to an array argv. And of course, the first argument it'll, is always your program name. So we're just gonna use that in this little output here is kind of the point there. You don't really have to launch it with any anything. We just wanna say uh, argv0, which will of course be the name of the program. And then we'll say version, just, just to confirm it all works here. And then we need that define. So we need this version major and version minor. That's going to be the variable name that's figured out at compile time. So we'll say the version major and we'll put a dot and then we'll say minor. And then we can just end the line here. I'm just going to do a new line with no flush. And there we go. So that there should spit it all out. So let's go ahead and run CMake again. And I'm just going to, I'll, I'll manually type in the commands here. Let's make this a little bigger so people can actually see it. So I'm gonna change directory, oops, change directory to our project first. And then let's take a look at the files real quick. It's kind of, kind of large, everything's there. We've got our config. And now when we update CMake, we'll go CMake source, uh, source CMakes in this directory. And the build one is in out, out slash build. This is what we're building to. And I could use those SH files I made last time, but I'm gonna avoid that this time. So it looks like it wrote everything. And now when we build, which is just make, run the make file that's in our eight in our out slash build does its thing it looks like it didn't have any errors and now we should be able to run it uh, what is there it is the less there we go so now when we run this it shows the name of the of what we ran since we ran it from back couple directories that's why we've got we got all this on it but it does now show the version as you can see. And of course it also pops up the window from that library we did with submodules last time. And that's really pretty much it for versioning. Now what happens is anytime you update this version here, it is automatically updated on, in your source code. So your source code has access to the version of your program. That way you can run checks like Maybe you want to check for backwards compatibility or something like that way in the future when you're changing things. Now you can just grab the version because you might know, oh, uh, I've changed something. Uh, if you're using a version this old, it won't work. So that way you can check when the user goes to run it and uh, things like that. And also, you know, any other thing you might need to know the version for. But that's pretty industry standard there for your projects. You want to have a version at least a major and minor if nothing else 
Thanks for watching this episode of CMake How To. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.